Hey, today we're going through how to do this kind of hyperlapse. And actually it's quite easy, so I'm going to show you how to do it on my computer. So let's jump right into it. First of all, you have to import all the images you took on the spot. I already did this and I use Lightroom for importing or organizing my photos and also editing my photos. And I also deselected some of these because I was actually shooting wide angle first and then I zoomed in to focus on the right spot and I forgot to zoom out again. Uh, sometimes that stuff happens but okay after you imported all the images this should this is how it should look like frame by frame and what I actually did here is I activated my grid on my camera so I can always focus on one point my focus point was this clock in the middle so I make sure my grid is centered here to the clock and this is what I did for the whole sequence make sure the clock always stays in the middle and also if you have a leveling meter inside of your camera use that to make sure that you have always the same angle this produces the best hyperlapses all right i also developed my images already because before that it looked like this also you can edit the photos here or inside of Premiere Pro or DaVinci, whatever you use for editing this video. But I wanted to make use of the RAW file, so I edited everything inside of Lightroom first. And then I exported it into a JPEG and put it in a subfolder if you want to. But make sure nothing else is in that folder, only your hyperlapse images. So there's one little thing I forgot to do and it always threw me off the program. So make sure to rename it and take, for example, custom name and sequence. So make, for example, hyperlapse and the sequence start number is one. So it creates like the first image is hyperlapse one, hyperlapse two and so forth. My export settings are JPEG, quality 100. This is enough for social media. Click on export and you're done inside of Lightroom. The next step is to jump into Adobe After Effects to stabilize the footage. So what you should do here is open your file explorer or finder for the Mac users here. So I navigate to my folder. I just exported my images here. So make sure you grab that folder here, drop it in. And as you can see, the sequence is here 001 until 087. This is what I did here. I just renamed my images like this. You can also do it afterwards inside of Bridge. You can batch rename all your images in there so you don't have any problems. All right, after that, right click on the import, go to new comp from selection. Now you have this. Now you can group these two together by uh, control A or just drag a lasso here and drop it into that folder icon down here you can leave it untitled next you go to the comp here new comp from selection and now we have this comp down here then go on the right side to your tracker tool if you don't see this go to window and make sure tracker is on then click on stabilize motion make sure you're on the first frame you can also start in the middle if you're not sure um, what you want to track zoom in a little bit with the mouse wheel then you can click and drag around with your middle mouse button. As you can see, my clock is not always in frame, so it's kind of hard to track. So I use this tower up here for tracking. So I just opened the window here and then you can drag this tracking window up to your point. The inner window is what it should track in your image and the outer window is actually where should Adobe After Effects look for your subject. I'm gonna leave it like this and then just click on analyze forward this will analyze the whole footage all right so this might take a while depending on the computer specs you have but uh, there we go we have our tracking here and sometimes as you can see it lost the track so you can just go in here frame by frame with the page up and down usually and here it just lost the track so you have to rearrange it just about here next frame about here and actually what you can do from here is again just drag and drop it and track it from there again you can also stop it in between if you see that after effect is not doing a great job just rearrange your tracking point here and then just track again and there we go now it does a great job tracking this little tower all right, we lost the tracking point once again. 
Let's go here and rearrange it. Go to the next frame. Actually let it track automatically frame by frame. So let's go one frame. And somehow it just lost the tracking here. Here of course because it's behind this pole. So just take an estimate here where it should be. And there we go. We have all the tracking points. So once you're satisfied with your tracking data, you can just go and apply it. We can play it through and it looks pretty solid. So go here on the side, click on apply, click OK. And now, as you can see, we have all the keyframes here, frame by frame. So the next thing is we're going to nest it here. So pre-compose this composition. Make sure you have move all attributes into the new composition checked. Click on OK. Now we can add a warp stabilizer because, you know, After Effects or Premiere Pro, you cannot really stack effects like Tracker and Warp Stabilizer. This is why we kind of nested here inside of After Effects. So right click on here, go to Track and Stabilize, Warp Stabilizer VFX and turn down the smoothness to about 15%. Just wait until it's analyzed. All right, after the stabilizer, we should have something like this. Let me play it through. Not so bad, right? So now we can add some time remapping. We can also jump into Premiere Pro to do it, which is kind of easier than in After Effects in my opinion, but we can also do it here. And once again, we have to nest our composition because we added the warp stabilizer. And to add a speed remap, we have to nest it once again. So go here on your composition again, right click on it go to time enable time remapping and there we go we have some keyframes here at the end and the beginning so let's say i want to have this in normal speed and from here it should start to go really fast so i'm going to add a keyframe here and it should stop around here so add another keyframe and here in between this is where the speed ramp happens this should go fast so if we take these two keyframes and drag it over here to the left, it should be quite fast in the middle. So let's see exactly this is what I wanted. So let's drag it a little bit more outside. So we have this speed ramp in the middle part. To make it more smooth, we can go here into the graph editor. Just click on it. Click on the time remap if you don't see something just like that. And now you can take this bezel here and go to convert selected keyframes into auto bezier yeah i think this is how you pronounce it and again the same with the upper one and now you can just play around and also play with the handles if you want to to make it look more smooth or faster and let's see how it looks like just like that looks pretty solid all right but there's something missing right so let's add the final sauce to it and this is a motion blur. So type in force and you will end up with CC force motion blur. Just drag and drop it into your composition. And here on effects, you can go up with the blur samples. I left it at around eight, I think. Some people like to have it high. So you have more motion blur throughout the clip, but this was too much for me. So let's see, this is definitely too much for me. So I left it at a lower number also because I'm going sideways here maybe it looks a little bit weird maybe if I would go frontal to somewhere it looks better with like 16 or so but I left it at 8 actually but you can play with this amount to your liking of course and get the motion blur you want all right and uh, that's about it you can also jump into Premiere Pro or so and make the clip going back and forwards I don't know how to do it in After Effects, to be honest. So what I would suggest is to go to File, Export, and export this file as an MP4. So add to Adobe Media Encoder Cube, and it should go in here. Yes, I used H.264 and Match Source High Bit Rate, actually. And you can also go in and edit the settings if you want to. I left it at this width and height. I just adjusted it inside of DaVinci. Premiere Pro is also actually pretty much the same. Just click on this button on Start Queue. And after that, import it into 
to your desired program. Let me open Premiere Pro for this. All right, so now we are inside of Premiere Pro. You just drag and drop your file in here into the project manager. Check if this is the right one. Yeah, looks like. Create a new timeline by right clicking on here on the empty field and also make sure you're on the project. Usually it's down here like um, at the beginning. You can also just drag and drop this up here. Right click, new item, sequence. If you go to a preset here, you can dial in everything. I have a TikTok preset, so just if you don't have this, go to DSLR or something, 1080p settings. I set my frames to 25 frames because I'm from Europe. You can, of course, set it to 23, 9.76 if you're from the US. Frame size, just change these values here. So you have your sequence for Instagram or TikTok. There we go. Okay. Drop your sequence in. Keep existing sequence. Zoom a little bit closer because this is quite small. You can also delete the audio here because we didn't need that audio output actually. You can also zoom out a little bit because this is too tight. Let me check the effect controls. Scale about this is good. It's 70. Uh, we can also go left and right because we have some room here to wiggle and this doesn't look so bad. Also we have a black screen of course at the end. Oh, I see some black bars here. So let me rearrange it a little bit more to the left. We have a black screen here because After Effects just rendered the whole timeline we had there since the beginning and because we added the time ramp in the middle, it got shortened. So just copy your footage by holding down Alt and drag and drop it, then rearrange it. And then you can just right click on your footage go to speed duration reverse speed okay and now you have a back and forward movement and this is how i did it you can also make it longer i only had 87 images but yeah just keep in mind if you want to have a sequence which is three seconds long you have to shoot about 75 images if you want to add a speed ramp of course it takes even more than that because every second has 25 frames as you might know so take 25 photos for one second, 50 for two, and 75 for three, and so forth. I will also cover up a new tutorial on how to shoot hyperlapses on the spot because we didn't cover up that part here. So let me know if you're interested in how to do this hyperlapse kind of videos on the street because there are some different variants to do it. Even with your smartphone, you can also do it the lazy way and don't walk like step by step and record the whole video instead of making photos. So there are different variants. Just let me know in the comments if you want to know how to do it and I will try to make a tutorial out of it. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was informative. I will see you in the next video.